in Gaza. Caroline Glick is with us. She's the senior contributing editor of the Jewish News Syndicate. Uh, thank you for joining us as we await the president's remarks. Uh, the Biden administration has announced several new sanctions uh, to count or actions, excuse me, to counter anti-Semitism. Do you believe that they go far enough? No, not at all. I think they undermine the struggle against anti-Semitism in the United States. The Biden administration took a perfectly good definition for dealing with anti-Semitism, which was made by the International Holocaust uh, Scholars Association and adopted by the by the Obama administration. Uh, and that definition said that anti-Zionism is a form of anti-Semitism. And he added to that a number of conditions through a different definition that he added. And that essentially paralyzed the ability of American Jews to seek civil rights protection from the federal government, because now the definition of anti-Semitism doesn't necessarily give protection to Jews who are attacked by people who accuse them of uh, being Zionist war criminals and attacking them because Israel exists. We've heard a number of these college protests um, continuing to chant from the river to the sea. Define what mm -hmm. that means to you. What that means to me is that people want to see me and my children and our entire family dead, and all of our neighbors and all of our and and all of our uh, uh, Israeli uh, brethren, because uh, Israel is located between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea, and the Palestinians have made very clear that they uh, seek the annihilation of the Jewish people. They enacted a one-day Holocaust when they had the opportunity to do so on October 7th when we let our guard down. And so that's why over 90 percent of Israeli Jews oppose Palestinian statehood. We understand that they don't want a state that will live side by side with Israel. They want a state that will exist on Israel's, uh, on, on Israel's embers, which they seek to burn down. So when they say Palestine from the river to the sea, what they're saying is, we want another Holocaust, which is why it wasn't surprising yesterday on uh, on, on uh, Holocaust Remembrance Day that you had uh, Palestinian uh, rioters outside of Auschwitz calling for the liberation of Palestine, meaning calling for another Auschwitz. Caroline, as we get ready to hear from President Biden, do you expect his remarks to be any different than what he shared last week as we watched the protests on college campuses across the country? What will you be listening for? You know, um, today, uh, National Security Council uh, spokesperson uh, John Kirby or James Kirby said that, no, um, we don't think that Israel should defeat Hamas, today's Nazi army, uh, because you can't defeat an idea. Well, that's not true. The United States defeated the Nazis in Germany, and the idea uh, was pretty much defunct until it was reincarnated in the form of Palestinian nationalism, which the United States apparently now uh, has made support of the centerpiece of the Biden administration's policy. And so, yes, you can defeat an idea. You can defeat an idea by denying hope to its adherents that they'll ever be able to achieve their goals. That's what happened in Germany in 1944-45, and that's what has to happen in Gaza today. You recently wrote an article in the Jewish News Syndicate. The headline reads, the Jewish vote is up for grabs and it may decide the election. Mm -hmm. How do Jewish voters feel about the situation right now and President Biden's policies as a whole? Well, we haven't seen any significant polls of Jewish voters since November. Um, but what we know for sure is that there's a sense of uh, insecurity on the part of Jewish Americans that they have never felt before in terms of the protection of their human rights, of their children, of their property uh, under the Biden administration. And um, it's something new for American Jews to have to deal with. You see constant humiliation of major Jewish American organizations by the Biden administration. Uh, and just the latest example was on uh, on Friday with a uh, with a meeting with the education secretary we, where he wanted to invite anti-Zionist, ostensibly Jewish groups to sit with the leaders of major Jewish organizations to talk about anti-Semitism on campus and major Jewish organizations had to pull out of that. So I think that you're looking at a situation where the American Jewish electorate is in play in a way that it hasn't before. It's not going to be allowed uh, movement away from the Democratic Party, but I think it'll be a large movement away from Biden at the ballot box. And Jews have the decisive demographic in four swing states, most importantly, Pennsylvania, but also Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, where the Jewish vote is much larger than the margin of victory between both Trump and Clinton in 16 and uh, Biden and Trump in 20. So if you just move a few thousand Jews in Pennsylvania and Arizona, Georgia, and Nevada, 
um, Trump wins all four of those states. Yeah, it will be critical as close as things are. What do you make of the claims of radicalizing America's youth at some of these protests we're seeing nationwide? I think it's absolutely true. I think, you know, what's weird is that in, in 2016, President Obama, uh, President Obama decided that he had to wait until after the November 16 elections in order to betray Israel at the UN because he was afraid that it was going to cost him votes among Democrats. Uh, cost Clinton votes. Uh, and so he only allowed a, a censure of Israel to go forward in the UN Security Council in December, the month after the election. But Biden seems to be under the impression that um, being anti-Israel is going to gain him votes among uh, young Americans. And that's one of the reasons why he's doubling down on policies that are likely to cost him major support among American Jews because he thinks that it's going to win them support from young Americans because they've been radicalized on college campuses. So it's young Americans, specifically young Americans who are college educated. They think that that, that this demographic is anti-Semitic. Caroline Glick, uh, as always, uh, thank you for your time on this as we await President Biden's remarks just moments from now. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me on your